Hi, welcome back to Vet Academy. A few episodes ago, you were introduced to some of the men who were instrumental in Corvette design over the years. Men like Harley Earl, Bill Mitchell, Larry Shinoda, and Tom Peters. They used their design talents to push Corvette style into what we know today. Today, we're going to look at a very special group of women. Women who helped shape automotive design style in the 1950s. Back in 1955, Mr. Harley Earl was the vice president of General Motors styling section. He put together the first all-female team of industrial designers hired by GM. As he created new teams of young designers, he wanted to recruit female graduates from design schools, like the Pratt Institute of Industrial Design in New York. As it turns out, several of the women who were hired had received their education and degree from the Pratt Institute. However, none of them had had the opportunity to work specifically in automotive design. They were recruited to work in what was then called the GM Styling Department. That department is now simply known as GM Design. In all, nine women were hired, and they ranged in age from 22 to 34 years old. Six of the nine would go to work in various GM vehicle divisions. They were assigned to assist in the interior or inside of the car designs. The rest went to GM's appliance division where they helped create the Kitchen of Tomorrow, an innovative futuristic look at kitchens for Frigidaire. Harley Earl nicknamed the group the Damsels of Design. Mr. Earl was an advocate or supporter of women's rights in automotive history. He recognized the importance of women in car purchasing decision-making. Harley Earl believed that women looked at cars differently than men in the showrooms. Women not only looked at the style of the exterior or outside of a car, but also wanted to know what options and functions were available on the interior or inside as well. That said, Mr. Earl believed the best way to sell more cars to women was to get them involved in the design process. So, how does this relate specifically to the Corvette division of Chevrolet? One of the women designers was Miss Ruth Glenny Peterson. She was tasked with the job of redesigning a Corvette. Her Corvette was named Fancy Free because it was meant to bring the feeling of freedom and traveling to people's minds. The Fancy Free Corvette was going to be showcased in the 1958 Auto Show. It was a beautiful silver olive metallic color that seemed to change depending on the light it was in. Ms. Glennie utilized four interior interchangeable seat cover treatments to match up with the four seasons of the year. The seats were specially shaped with built-up sides meant for comfort. In addition, Ruth added a storage bin for a purse to fit. But even more importantly, Miss Glenny introduced the very first retractable plastic seat belts. Fancy Free was definitely unique, both inside and out. The damsels of design also developed other innovations or changes in the interior vehicles. Glove compartments, light up mirrors, child seats, and head up displays began with these women designers. In addition, the women were involved in more advanced research projects related to technology and other safety components. So many things that we all know and continue to use in our vehicles today were designed by women. All in all, the damsels of design were trailblazers in the male-dominated world of automotive design. We certainly appreciate their contributions to the industry. Here at the National Corvette Museum, we have a newly created women-driven organization named Elfie's Sisterhood. Elfie Duntov was the wife of Zora Arcus Duntov, who we will meet in a future episode. These women not only share their love of Corvette, but also wish to continue the museum's mission of education. They recently came together to fund a future exhibit showcasing the contributions of the damsels of design. Look for it to be unveiled in 2021. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll discuss the history and a little bit of mystery surrounding Corvette and the year 1983.